Okay, good morning and um, happy Saturday. Here we are again. And I think we're just going to continue a bit from where we were last week. With last week, we did different fruits and I'm using our travel card here that has different samples. So I'll just keep working on this so we can see how, uh, how long it's gonna last. So far, we've done a, f a couple paintings and you can't really tell that it's been used at all, but onwards, onwards and upwards. So this time we're gonna do a watermelon. And then after that, we'll see if we have time for a lemon. Okay, so there's two ways to start when you're you're painting like this. Uh, it's nice if you can put a bit of a wet, a little wet zone down because watercolor direct to paper, especially with a very staining color, is gonna uh, make a really sharp line and be quite staining. So I'm kind of painting in a half moon smile shape here. And this is gonna be my slice of watermelon. It doesn't have to be really exact. Just enough of a puddle that when we add a bit of color like this, then we're more just pushing that, that color around the shape that we've added. And now it's our choice where we want the sharp edges of this to be. So I'm just going to use my brush to push a bit of this color around. I'm using a, a cherry magenta, but any kind of pink, any kind of pink will do. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle or half circle, you know, watermelons, there's a lot of the tiny ones these days, but then I've also seen uh, they used to be quite long and football shaped, those kind too. Let's make one corner really dark here. I'm just putting a, a bit more. Actually, you know, watermelons can be pretty dark in the middle and then they get paler close to the edge. So maybe we'll, we'll try that. Okay, so this is going to be our slice of watermelon. And we're just going to let that dry for a second. And we'll go on to the whole watermelon. I'm going to park that uh, maybe down here. So for the whole watermelon, I'm going to do a similar thing. Just take some water and give yourself a, a little spot to land a little puddle to land your concentrated coloring. Okay, and now I'm using a bit of spring green. And the same thing, now that we're in, we're dropping our color in, I'm just gonna shape out a melon, kind of around like a sugar baby melon. Okay, you can leave it, um, you know, when you have little blooms, darker areas and lighter areas, that's really what makes these kinds of things have their interest. You don't have to try to make it perfectly even. You just want a green shape, football, soccer ball, just a, just a green shape. And then now we're going to take a little touch of any blue. I have an ultramarine great ocean and I have almost night a thallow here. So I'm using a little bit of thallow. You can use any blue you have. Depending how much water you've put here. And you can see my paper is still pretty wet for both of these. And you can see the color even move around as I move the paper. So <laughs> if you have a, a bit more time, you can wait. I'm just going to put, you know, on the outside of the watermelon, there are these little stripies. And they're kind of wiggly. 
Oh, that's that's too blue. If you add a bit too much blue, you can just go back in with more green or you get fancy, we can chase after it with uh, yellow and see how the yellow goes in and it follows that blue and it, it uh, absorbs into it and makes a nice green. That's kind of a happy accident there. Okay, so some watermelons have a bit more of a yellow on the bottom. They've been sitting in the garden. So there's that. Mm. Maybe we can try this again now. Is you only need the teensiest bit of blue. Oops, that's purple. To put these kind of stripies in. And you're just giving the idea that this is, uh... there we go. So when I'm putting these, these stripes in, the ones in the center that are coming straight through the middle of the melon are almost straight. And as I go out to the outside edge of the melon, I'm just curving a bit to match the, the curve of the watermelon. So whatever shape you've made your watermelon, you're just going to curve until you get to the middle and then you start curving to the right. And that's almost the same way for painting uh, phases of the moon too, if, you, if you're trying that. So now here we are. If you remember last week's grape, grapevine, this is almost the same thing. So I've got my brush. When you need to cover a large area with color and you hold your brush sideways to get maximum uh, surface covering, but when you need to do really fine lines, try putting a, a bit of water on your brush, like enough. If you have enough that you can see a water droplet at the tip of your brush, then when you touch that to the paper, it'll make a large blob and that'll be hard to handle. So you want this about this much water. It's, it's wet, but there, when I hold my brush like this, it, no water droplet forms. So then I have a bit of green on here and we're gonna use uh, the magic of bio, there must be a word, it wouldn't be biometrics, but we're not gonna use our hand to really do this. It's, we're gonna hold our paintbrush straight up and down. And now we're gonna practice in the air a bit above your, above your painting. You're just gonna do little circles really quickly. Loo, 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 loo. And we're gonna start from the top you're going to do some circles to the right and then some circles to the left and just generally <clears throat> let yourself go a little little wild here okay circles and the other direction circles and once we get about to there i started to to dry out on the brush so let's try it again this is a fun thing to practice just on an empty the back sheet of paper because uh, you can get, uh, well, it's just, it's just really satisfying. You can slow down your curly cues and like place them where you want. You can take one of your curly cues and kind of uh, loop off of it. Like from here, maybe we wanna go this way. You can layer them by having some that are a little bit darker. Let's see. This. And you can just kind of twist back and forth, right, left. Don't be afraid to overlap what you've already done. And then you can even put some mini ones in there. I know grapes and melons sometimes have little mini mini pieces coming off that help them hang on to uh, whatever they're growing over. So now we're off into melon leaves and melon leaves now we've changed the angle of our brush again so we're we're flat pretty flat and I'm going to do one leaf here so we lay this down with my puddle of, of paint 
And I think a watermelon leaf has five lobes. It has one big one at the front, and then it has a couple coming off the side. It's a lot like uh, it's a lot like the grape leaf, except we, the a grape leaf really is kind of pointy, and these ones are more uh, lobed. So you you can put try putting a few leaves uh, anywhere on your vine system. They don't all have to have five lobes. We're just kind of showing that this is a this is a plant. If you want to touch a bit of that same blue into the leaves there, watermelon leaves and the, are pretty dark green. So any kind of blue strokes that you add onto your leaf, we're just going to add some neat interest. And really, in a garden, this is like a mountain of green leaves. So we're kind of doing a, a designy cute, cute one here. See these leaves, they're not full five lobe. There's just one. We get into the magic of suggestion here. We just have one, maybe a, a lobe on either side, one sideways. When you do different, once you do one leaf like that, everybody knows this is a leaf as well, and this is a leaf. You can just touch in details wherever you want them. Maybe we'll do, uh, and do one more right here, pointed down. So here's a shape, and a lobe, and a lobe. And I'm going to add a bit more confident blue. I'm doing a little, the center line that arcs down the leaf is going to give your leaf the shape of its curl. And then from the center line, any lobes you've made, you could do a center line to them. And then from those center lines, you can branch off like, like this. And that that's uh, something that gives your leaves more, more detail. As you keep going around adding leaves, you can go back to ones you've already done. I just thought maybe the microphone was turned off and everything was quiet and no one could tell me. But I think we're good. Okay, so now we're going to go back. You can see how dry this has gotten. It's dry enough that our watermelon slice here isn't going to, it's not going to bleed if we accidentally touch it with this green. So now I've got a bit, no, oh, maybe I spoke too soon there. Okay, I'm going to try to leave a bit of a gap. And I turn, because I'm right handed, my most confident stroke is, is curling like this. So if I need to do a really steady line, I'll turn my page so that I can use my most confident stroke, which is just pulling in toward, towards me. If you were left handed, I think it would be the, the other way. And you see, I can just keep rotating the paper and using the same position as my hand is landed fully on the table and I'm just pulling this brush towards me. And I just keep turning my paper. I'm gonna to try to get as close as I can to the pink without really touching it. If you just wait and let your, your pink totally dry, you won't really have to wait like that. But watermelon does have like light color right at the uh, at the rind, so I don't mind having that little gap. I'm gonna put a little bit of blue into the screen too, just because uh, to get that really nice watermelon dark green. Okay, and now. 
this is pretty much dry. If you have a brown or a black or even just a very concentrated pink magenta, now using the tip of our brush, we can drop little seeds in there. And when you just touch it down, if you have the point of your brush pointing into the middle of the watermelon, it'll look pretty cute. And again, you could turn the brush if that helps you uh, land with your point facing the way that you, you want it to. Okay. So there is our cute watermelon. I think we probably have time for a quick lemon. So I'll put the watermelon here. <laughs> watermelon, watermelon is more complicated than, than a lemon, but this is just kind of, okay. Lemon, jump right in. And then coming up and around, we're making a football shape. It's a large football with a nub at the end. Nub and a nub. And we're filling it in. And we can try to give a really concentrated yellow, yellow, just on the front, the bottom and the side. That's going to give it a bit of a, a 3D look. And then we're going to do a big leaf, lots of water on the brush, and one big wet curl this way, and a little there. I'm going to come off of this leaf and just touch the top of the lemon. You make this like a, a lemon branch. I'll have one more leaf here. One big rounded stroke. And maybe we'll make this one like the what we did in the watermelon. One round leaf like that. And we add a little bit of blue into it. Give it some, some detail in the leaf. Can do that on this side too. This side's pretty, still pretty wet. And then with, I still have my, my blue on my brush. I'm just gonna lightly trace up the top side of the stem. The bottom side of the stem is still green. That gives us a nice 3D look. Sometimes these branches have little nubs on them, maybe where there was another fruit. So there's the full fruited lemon. And maybe there is a lemon peel or a lemon slice here. Let's see. For a lemon slice, so it's the same thing as a watermelon. This would be like the rind. And now with the teensiest bit of paint, we go right across the top and then we're just painting in the segments of the lemon. Not really fussily, we're leaving a little bit of white space in between our, uh, our segments and that gives you the, the look of the the lemon wedge. Okay, so there's your one minute lemon and <laughs> 20 minute watermelon. And that is part two of cute fruits. And this is where we're at with our travel card. I suppose if I paint a lot of leaves, we're gonna run out of the green first, but looks like we're still holding strong. So thank you again for joining and please message us or comment below anything else that you'd like to see in the next uh, in next Saturday's paints.